Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, the Branchiopod Lab. In this video, I wanted to showcase an incredible species that is yet to be described. But it will be soon. So, what makes this fairy shrimp so special? This fairy shrimp belongs to the genus Eubrancopus, a group of fairy shrimp typically associated with temperate regions that exhibit a fair amount of snowfall and freezing temperatures. However, this fairy shrimp was identified in central Texas, which is quite unexpected for fairy shrimp belonging in this genus. Is this typical for this genus? Another species that occurs in the south is Eubrancopus stegosus, a rare fairy shrimp found in the southeastern region of the United States, in states like Georgia and Florida, so it is possible for them to occur so far down south. However, the majority of this genus inhabits states like Tennessee, Ohio, Oregon, Washington, and many other northern states that receive fair amounts of precipitation and wintry weather. Now, how does a fairy shrimp of this genus even survive in central Texas, where conditions can get extremely hot and arid during the summer, and winters can be so mild that some days reach 80 degrees mid-January? Well, I have one theory. As I've been in the search for more Eubrancopus fairy shrimp here in Texas, after reviewing historical records of fairy shrimp occurring in the southern regions of the United States, it seems like these fairy shrimp are more capable of unpredictable habitats and have restrictive measures of hatching that they only occur when conditions are just right. This might be every other year or every two years. I suspect the recurrence is highly tied to an El Nino cycle where our winters are wetter and cooler, giving them just what they need. If you didn't know already, fairy shrimp in the genus Eubrancopus are set apart from the rest of the fairy shrimp family when it comes to hatching. Water alone will not do the trick. Instead, a few environmental factors must take place to trigger pre-hatching and then hatching. Pre-hatching might be a new term for a majority of you. This is where the embryo emerges from the egg. However, this embryo is still encapsulated by a membrane and continues to slowly develop into a metanopolis until it bursts from the membrane or completely hatches. I wanted to see how this fairy shrimp compares to its northern counterparts when it comes to hatching. So I ran a few tests to raise this fairy shrimp in captivity, since I can't wait another year or two for them to pop up in their natural habitat. I wanted to learn more about them now. According to this research paper, which I'll link in the description below, physiochemical factors inducing embryonic development and spring hatching in the European fairy shrimp, Siphonophanes grevi, by Jens Mawson. Fairy shrimp in the genus Eubrancopus required a period of time for the eggs to be in warm, humid, moist conditions before placing them at freezing temperatures to trigger pre-hatching. So, the weather patterns need to be just right. A wet and warm fall followed by more precipitation and cooler weather in the winter. However, since Texas generally has sometimes dry falls and mild winters, how long does this species need to be exposed to wet conditions and cold temperatures to trigger pre-hatching? That's what I wanted to find out. I originally collected eggs by isolating the female fairy shrimp and allowing them to release eggs. I used a pipette to collect the eggs and dry them. I placed the dry eggs in a vial with tap water and let them set at room temperature for about a month, then into a chiller with temperatures ranging from 45 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit. After about two weeks, I got eggs to pre-hatch. It felt like a synchronized event as they all began to hatch in the third week. They hatched as metanopli, However, very small compared to their northern counterparts, and pale in coloration. But when they started swimming, it was a huge difference. These fairy shrimp were highly active, propelling themselves very sporadically. I was also growing the Oregon fairy shrimp at these same temperatures. However, when it came to growing, this undescribed species took the floor, as its development was rapid compared to the northern species. The Oregon fairy shrimp took almost as twice as long to develop. 
these fairy shrimp quickly developed adult characteristics, and in about two to three weeks, these guys were fully developed fairy shrimp. I wanted to test the limits even more to see what temperatures they could withstand, since Texas winters are not all that cold. So, I placed them in a new display tank and kept the indoor temperatures within 62 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Surprisingly enough, they were just fine and thrived. I kept it around these temperatures for about a month, and they continued to grow and reproduce just fine. The colors on these fairy shrimp were absolutely stunning. They varied from greens, purples, reds, oranges, and white. They're definitely one of my favorite fairy shrimp now. After they had reproduced for a while, I raised the temperatures above 70 Fahrenheit, and then I saw a decline in the population. So it looks like 70 degrees might be their maximum temperature. This basically concludes this video, but hopefully, soon more information about the species will be published, and I'll make a part two. For now, enjoy the rest of these clips, and if you really enjoyed this content, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more Brankyopod content.